Hi, so in this video, we are going to understand the concept of line integration. Line integration is a part of BSc mathematics or graduation mathematics, but as well as it is a part of graduation physics as well. So first we will try to understand the core physics concept of the line integration. The first few minutes of the video would be just physics. And then once we understand the physics behind line integration, we will try few numericals which concede which cover most of the important concepts so let's start line integration so basically line integration is an expression of this form this is the form of line integration where we have a function which can be anything we have a position vector or a position element which i will define later on we have a simple integration with an initial limit and the final limit so that's not much let's go some into some detail so consider I have a curve, okay, because a curve is somewhat similar to a line, okay, in the geometric sense. So suppose I have a curve whose name is C. Now I name the initial point of the curve as A, I, name, I label the final point of the curve as B. Now suppose I want to calculate something on this curve, okay. So in physics, we do not calculate things directly. What we consider is a small infinitesimal element on that curve or on that surface or on that volume or anything we are dealing with then we integrate that whole thing so in this case we will consider a small segment which i will name as dl okay and we will define something for it then finally we will integrate that element dl now what does that integration do so integration basically means combining all the small 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 elements along the curve so when we combine all the small elements, for example, here I have combined all the small DL DL elements. So basically, if I continue this further on, so I will co cover full curve only. Okay, so I will cover full curve only. So what I had to do by uh, do what I would can do directly, I had taken the support of the element DL. That is what we do in physics. So what I have done here is I had put the limit because I have to start from A, I have to end on B and here I have, I have written my function which is a dot product. So because it is a dot product, so I will get a scalar as my answer. Dot product is also referred to as a scalar product. So best example is suppose I want to calculate the work done. Work done is equals to the force into displacement, right? So if I want to DW is equals to the force dot DS. But suppose I want to calculate the total work done. So then we integrate the function f with respect to ds, which is displacement. So this is the best example of how line integration can be used. Now let us define the terms mathematically. Okay, so mathematically f is a vector valued function. Basically, it contains i cap, j cap, k cap. Again, dr or dl or ds, whatever symbol you write. It is also a vector valued function because it is essentially a position vector by position vector it already contains direction so yes it is also a vector valued function if i multiply d by this side so definitely everything will get multiplied by d and yes in dot product i cap dot i cap becomes one j cap dot j cap becomes one k cap dot k cap becomes one so this is what i will get so finally instead of this i can also write this as the answer so this is the mathematical definition of the line integration okay now the thing here is there are three variables in the equation there is dx there is dy there is dz but if i look at this integral i can substitute only one limit in this integral right i can write either x is equals to the zero to x is equals to the phi or i can write y is equals to the one to y is equals to the something or i can write about z right so this is the problem here but the solution to this problem is known as parametrization so what is the meaning of the word parametrization see we are considering here a curve right we have been given a curve which is which starts from a and ends towards b so for that curve we will also be provided with an equation of that curve okay so by using that equation of that curve we will try to convert the variables into one form for example i can write x as x i can convert y into x i can convert z into the form of x for example i can write y is equals to the 1 minus x 
I can write z is equals to the 1 minus x square depending upon the equation this this was just a random example so basically if I write everything in terms of x so then I can use the limits of x right this is one way of solving the numericals the second way to solve the numericals is by converting the variables all the three variables for in some fourth variable t so I will convert x into t I will convert y into t I will convert z into t and I will give the limit says t is equals to the 0 to t is equals to the something like infinity or whatever I have in the question don't worry we will solve sums also and then I will make you show that how we use this words let's go back to the physics so consider I have a curve okay and that curve is closed curve okay it is not starting at a at and ending at some other point b let's say that curve is come coming again and it is ending at that point only so mathematically i can say that a is equals to the b because both are not different from each other so this is called as a closed curve and the line integral of closed curve is always zero this is a property line integral of a closed curve is zero See in physics we used to say the work done is zero whenever there is no displacement. So this is physics only right suppose you started walking from this point you completed one circle and you again you are at the same point so displacement is zero. So if displacement is zero work done is zero simple okay. So line integral of a closed curve is zero and what this line integration tells us is the circulation of the elements across dx dy and dz. So basically if the line integration is zero that means there is no circulation if there is no circulation so the line integration is also referred to uh, the function is also referred to as the irrotational vector function where whenever our line integration is zero okay now what does dot product represents actually right we are writing f dot dr we are writing integration of f dot ds if integration of f dot something so dot product always deals with cos of theta so let us write the same way now i can write f with cos of, cos of theta so we know that f can have two components one component can be f cos theta and the other component can be f sine of theta so one component is parallel to the plane one component is perpendicular to the plane depending upon the situation so in this situation suppose this is my dr element or dl element whatever you consider so f cos theta will be the tangential to the dr element we can simply see from the diagram itself okay suppose this is the theta between the surface and the f so f cos theta will be tangential to my dl element okay it will pass directly uh, through the element okay so let's consider let's conclude the topic by discussing the last point usually we would expect that the line integration depends upon the path for, for example if a goes this way to b there would be some another answer because answer of line integration is a scalar quantity so let's say line integration is 10 the answer which i get but if a goes to b in this way i would expect that the answer would be different but for some particular functions some particular vector functions integral is also path independent integral does not depends upon the path it only depends upon the end points which are a and b we also have a theorem for it we will do in the later videos so if our integral is path independent then that field is called as conservative vector field the field is called as conservative vector field and this is one of the most important field which we deal with which we deal in physics okay our whole electrodynamics is based on such conservative vector fields so by the end of this topic we have concluded all core concepts which are needed to study line integration from the perspective of a physicist in detail so let us now try to do some numericals for the same concept so let us try to solve this numerical so in this question we have to evaluate the line integral across path 1 then we have to follow path 2 where a reaches this point and then a goes to this point 
okay so this is my function a given so basically the trick which we have to follow is see we have to always calculate the dot product of the things right so first we will always evaluate the section of di what is di contains di is essentially equals to the dx times of i cap plus dy times of j cap plus dz times of k cap so always we will first evaluate the section of di for example let us consider the path 2 okay let us consider the horizontal section of the path 2 so what can we analyze from this horizontal section we can simply say that in this horizontal section uh, see first of all dz does not exist in this question right dz does not exist fine because it is a two dimensional picture so in this horizontal path i can clearly say that my y is equals to the one and my y is equals to the constant because y is not changing and if anything is not changing that dy is equals to the zero if di dy is equals to the zero then this part will become automatically zero so what i will left over will be i will be left over with this term which is this and x is varying from one to two okay so if i take a dot product of this now f dot di so di all uh, uh, just contains this i cap right so basically this part will become zero because there is nothing there to multiply with so okay so what i will get essentially is y square times of dx okay and if i try to integrate this term f di f dot di with y square times of dx and uh, how x is varying x is varying from 1 to 2 because here it is 1 here it is 2 so here it is varying from 1 to 2 and what i can say is what is y y is the 1 value of y is 1 over there so integration of 1 with respect to dx so this will give me nothing but 2 minus 1 gives me 1 so this is the answer okay so if i try to calculate the line integration over this region so my answer is equals to the 1 in the similar way now we will analyze the vertical part of this equation and again we will analyze the term di now what happens in the vertical part of this equation okay so in the vertical part i can say my x is equals to the 2 and x is equals to the constant right i can say that so basically then my dx becomes zero right because x is equals to the 2 is equals to the constant so there is no change but i can surely say that my y is varying from 1 to 2 so y is varying from 1 to 2 so again let us analyze this situation dx times of i cap plus dy times of j cap so basically this time this goes 0 so whatever i have is in terms of j cap so if i take a dot product of f with dl so whatever i will be getting is only in terms of j cap which is 2x times of y plus 1 times of dy if i integrate it and integration will be in the limits of 1 to 2 okay so what is x here x is equals to the 2 in this section in this vertical line so if i write 2 here i will get 4 so 4 into integration of 1 to 2 y plus 1 times of dy now let us separate the integral i will get y square by 2 plus i will get the answer y and let us put the limit into 1 by 2 and let us put the limit into 1 by 2 so here i will get 4 minus 1 which is 3 by 2 and in this case i hope i am doing right 4 minus 1 3 by 2 and in this case i will get 2 minus 1 which is 1 so basically i will get 2 plus 1 no there is something actually wrong Hi, here it is 4 right i have to multiply 4 also so i will get here um, y square by 2 which is right and it is 4 3 is 12 12 by 2 and again i will get 2 minus 1 which is 4 3 is 12 by 2 which is 6 and 6 plus 4 is 10 so basically integral of this part is 10 integral of this path is 1 so along path 2 my the answer of my line integral is 10 plus 1 which is equals to the 11 okay so this is the one part of the question if we take the another path say i consider this path okay path number one so if i try to analyze path number one what i can see directly is at this point my x coordinate is 1 my y coordinate is 1 at this point b my x coordinate is 2 my y coordinate is 2 so basically my x is equal to y clearly so my dx is equal to dy clearly right and if these two are so okay if this two is so so then 
I can just write the equation in terms of x, right? Basically, instead of y, I can write x square dx. Instead of uh, those things, I can just replace the equation by a single variable, right? And take out its dot product. So basically, what I will be getting is somewhat like this, okay? And since dx is all over, so I can just take out everything in common. So I will get x square plus 2x square plus 2x times dx and this would give me 3x square plus 2x okay so what i will get is 3x square plus 2x as my final answer and here it is integration of f dot di so here i will also integrate from 1 to 2 because here x is 1 x is 2 so let us try to calculate the integration integration of x square is x cube by 3 so 3 3 goes cancel here i have limits as 1 by 2 x ka integration x by 2 and also here 2 again 2 by 1 this this cancel so here it will be 8 minus 1 here it will be 4 minus 1 so this gives me the answer 7 plus 3 which is 10 so if i go directly from point a to b then my integration is 10 okay my integration is 10 but if i follow the path number 2 then my integration is 11 so you can see that line integration depends actually upon the path we are choosing now suppose they have asked you to evaluate this around the closed loop along the path 1 and 2 basically you have to go through path 2 then you have to come through path number 1 so if we go through this path we will get 11 as the answer right 1 here and 10 here but if we come back with this path we get 10 as the answer as we calculated just now i am using minus sign because we are coming in the opposite direction right so 11 minus 10 essentially becomes 1 so yes there is some difference so basically line integration depends upon the path let's try to calculate another sum in which we have been provided with a function okay this is a value of a function and uh, we have to evaluate over this curve so as i said previously that if we have been provided a single integration and we have been provided with two variables like x and y so definitely we have to use the concept of parameterization by which we have to convert each variable into another form so same way in this equation in this uh, numerical i have been given the relation between y and x so i will uh, resubstitute y with the term 2x square so what i will get is f is equal to 3x instead of y x square i will write 2x square i cap <coughs> minus y square i will write 2x square times of j cap okay so what i get is 6x cube i cap minus uh here it is square right here it is square so minus 4 x raised to 4 times of j cap so this is my function f uh, if i take a dot product with say dr so what i will get is 6x cube times of dx minus 4 x raised to 4 times of dx no here it is the loop see the loop is basically uh, if i try to calculate the dot product with dr okay so this is my f suppose okay this is my f j cap what is my dr my dr is equals to the dx times of i cap plus dy times of j cap so basically what i will get is 6x cube times of dx minus 4x raised to 4 times dy so basically there is no point in converting uh, y if we still have a dy so from here itself we will evaluate the value of dy so let us differentiate this equation with respect to x so what i will get is 4 uh, 2 and here it is really derivative of 4x so here i will get dy is equals to the 4x times dx so now instead of dy i will substitute this value which will essentially give me uh, this value will be same and this value will 16 x raised to 5 times of dx now let us try to find integral of this term which is ranging from x is my varying from 0 to 1 if you have considered uh, every term in terms of y then you have to take limit from 0 to 2 but in case of x we are varying with 0 to 1 and the integration is 6x cube dx okay minus 16x raised to 5 times of dx so here i will get 6x raised to 4 by 4 minus 16x raised to 6 by 6 here i will get 0 to 1 things like and here again i will get 0 to 1 so here i will get 3 by 2 so 3 by 2 times of 1 minus 8 by 3 
okay and here i will get again one so let us try to take lcm multiply all these by three so i will get nine by six multiply this by two i will get 16 by six so basically the answer is minus seven by six which is the correct answer